Hi everyone, um, welcome back to my series on local North Bay authors. Um, and today we are looking at Blake Hicks, his unfinished book, which is titled Night and Day. At least that's the proposed title so far because it is unfinished. So yeah, Blake's relationship to North Bay is that his grandparents on his mother's side used to live here um, and he had a lot of fond memories as a child discovering his love for fried bologna at the restaurants in town. Um, his grandparents were also indigenous um, and lived on the reserve just outside of town. Lake and his girlfriend moved to North Bay later in life after being in Welland, Ontario um, and having a really bad experience with a schizophrenic neighbor. After the conflict with the neighbor, Lake's parents had offered for them to stay at the grandparents' house um, in North Bay, and now they live in an apartment in the middle of town, and they are doing well. Uh, part of his decision to come to North Bay was to get back in touch with his indigenous roots, but so far has not really had any luck doing that, and even experienced some racism despite being white or white passing. Instead, he has chosen to focus on his own spiritual self. Those are his words, and I think there's no other way of explaining that, so sorry for the air quotes, but I don't mean that sarcastically. <laughs> Despite this, uh, Lake and his girlfriend were really enchanted by the natural views of North Bay in their first few months of living there in a house on the lake. So Lake is an aspiring writer on mental health and well-being. Um, he began writing by writing weed reviews for uh, Weed Deal between 2017 and 2019. He mentioned writing a total of 93 reviews, all ranging between 500 and 1000 words, which is pretty impressive for reviews. Like, that, that's a long review, that's in-depth. Yeah, so he saw writing as an outlet for his trauma and struggles with mental health, but he has come to also see it as an avenue to help others as well. So, so far, Lake has only written the unfinished book that we're looking at today, which is a book about his life, really, um, that he wrote in a hotel room three years ago over the span of a week. The first half of the book features a lot of his struggles and trauma um, and just venting all of those emotions. And also aspirations, um, there's kind of a, a mix between like the negative and the positive, like good and bad days um, in the first half. And then the second half of the book is meant to be more about healing, uh, maturing, and having some thoughtful retrospection about the first half of the book. Uh, Lake has also mentioned that he plans to write another book someday exploring the law of attraction um, in combination with mental illness um, which would result in a book that would dip into both psychology and healing he has written some of his thoughts on his, on this topic on reddit under the subreddit r slash law of attraction under the username dj gamma rabbit i will like put that up here. Well, yeah, today we are looking at Night and Day, uh, the unfinished book. I guess if I had to classify this book in a genre, it would probably be a memoir because it doesn't really follow uh, a chronological narrative that is typical of like autobiographies, but the memoir is just a lot of segments and its entries, um, sometimes almost resembling like journal journal entries. Um, so I think memoir is the closest genre that I could compare it to. Um, yeah. So one of the most interesting things about this book is that it was written on an iPhone 5S that was really broken. Early on in the actual book, Lake uh, confesses to writing on the iPhone, uh, writing that I know I'll probably rewrite this out of me dropping my iPhone over a year ago in the screen, although unscathed over its six year life. I shifted just enough to turn the screen purple when using a brightness past zero, and I cannot guarantee that when I highlight everything to copy, it'll be replaced with a one. I love my iPhone 5S and write on it more than any medium. I want a typewriter. They mean business. Try playing games on a typewriter, I think to myself. 
Did I really just use that style of writing? I like... <laughs> there's a lot of honesty in the writing. Um, I also think that it, it being written on an iPhone just plays into the um, honesty and the realness of just feeling the need to write and to express things through writing because you can't always wait around to get to a computer or a typewriter um and who writes by hand anymore no not me so yeah just whipping out your phone on notes and just writing a whole book is really feels really like a real thing to do and editing isn't very easy to do on an iphone so um there could be mistakes or typos and that's just part of it but i think for the type of writing that lake is doing i think the form speaks a lot to what the book is trying to do um, i think i wasn't going to mention this but i think i will now uh, lake had also mentioned to me that he wanted to finish the book, specifically the healing portion. <laughs> he said that he bought a computer two weeks ago to finish it. This this was from like a month ago, or maybe like a few weeks ago, I don't remember exactly when. So that number might have changed, but still, I got a computer recently um, to finish it. Um, and I think reading the book, um, having the first half written on an iPhone, a broken iPhone, and then getting to the second half and it's written on the computer and that second half is like the healed perspective and the first half was the that person that was struggling i think that the form <laughs> is really important um in conveying exactly how lake was feeling when he wrote this book so obviously this work is an example of free writing, which is just writing without a specific structure um, and often stemming from the writer's mind and thoughts. I am a big Kerouac person. I will be doing my PhD on Jack Kerouac. And I think this, the idea of free writing in Lake's book, um, kind of recalls some of Kerouac's writing philosophies. One of them being don't erase or edit um, and say what you mean. That's basically how he wrote on the road. It was just however many weeks of just typing away and then not going back to fix things. It's just what happened happened. What he wrote was what he wrote. Uh, it's honest. It may not be a perfect piece of writing, but it's cool. Another Kerouac quote would be, the best teacher is experience. So, you know, write from life. And also, he said, one day I will find the right words and they will be simple. Um, and I think all of these Kerouac writing philosophies are true for Lake's writing. Um, it's just, I like that Lake, Lake's writing is to say it's simple, it may be reductive because sometimes it gets a little bit complicated, especially when he goes on um, tangents about the law of attraction, which I can, ad I will admit that I don't know that much about. But I guess just the idea of the words being simple is that it's written in a way that's familiar. It's written as if someone was speaking to you, like as a friend, like someone like. It, feel, it just feels real, you know? Obviously, Lake is writing about his real lived experiences, so the best teacher is experience, so. Sorry, I just had to throw my little Kerouac moment in there because I'm looking at a lot of Kerouac stuff recently. On the idea of this work being written as if to like a friend, and it's very honest, um, and it's not fluffed up in any way, there's a whole section of the book where Lake is talking about Eminem, and I will share a couple passages with you just to show what I mean. Um, so let's, let's get to it. So 
I will, I will read the quote. I sigh, a long day, the sun disappearing into a colorful sky and a black blue outline below. I go to turn my keys out of the ignition when I hear on the radio, get ready for a new Eminem track. Right away, basically any M fan stops whatever the fuck they're doing and will allot three and a half minutes to hear whatever it is this man has created. So I would like to just first point out that Lake is nicknaming Eminem M. It just feels very personal like even with a celebrity like is making it familiar to him it's making it it's conveying just how important Eminem is to him on the topic of names uh, Lake also writes who I feel Eminem who I feel weird not just calling Marshall like I expect everyone to know his name slash kidding yeah, I think this one is interesting too. I don't know that I fully understand what the sentence means, but it really makes it seem like the nicknaming of M, a short for like M and M, is very intentional, and it's not simply like shortening M and M because he's typing on his phone. Um, I think it's very deliberate. It's to be familiar, and instead of writing. Marshall, which be, I think most people, if not all people, know that Eminem's real name is Marshall. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this, actually. I apologize for seeming disorganized. I just, I remember reading this and I thought I understood it, and now as I'm reading the sentence again, I feel a little bit confused about it. But I. I just think it's important to this this idea of like familiarity and naming and making Eminem a person who through Lake's writing is like a, he's familiar to him, like someone he knows. Um, like he's talking to a friend about a friend, if that makes sense to you. And then another Eminem passage I want to share is uh, about two months ago, I saw this stupid effing fake hoax bullshit on Facebook that said Eminem dead on its banner and I was about to go to my fridge, pick it up on some Johnny Cash level rage and chuck that shit out the fucking window down the hall. No, I can't actually do that. That's how I felt. I was looking at myself with concern after realizing it were fake 10 seconds later. The feeling of the universe somehow failing me ob obtusely. I don't even know the guy. Relax. So, <laughs> there's like awareness, um, but also a lot of attachment and loyalty to Eminem. So, evidently, Lake is very attached to Eminem, and I don't say that in a negative way. It's just when you really idolize someone, it can be that way. And then, the f in addition to the familiarity thing, it's like Lake was really felt like feels like he knows Eminem for whatever reason. And when he says, I don't even know the guy, relax, it's, there's like some self-awareness that he knows that he doesn't really know him, but it doesn't make that feeling of familiarity any lesser than it actually is. I also think in this passage, we can kind of get a feel for Lake's writing style and how it's kind of um, spontaneous. It's it's honest and it's a very clear example of free writing the counterpart to free writing in fiction is the stream of consciousness usually where um, a narrative attempts to mimic um, the character's uh, thought process or inner monologue at one point lake mentions PTSD doesn't let you just rest a minute so you can enjoy things. It's like if it were a stream of consciousness, it would be a dribble of water and not plowing directional river. Instead, you get hosed down every so often with a, with a palm of lime thrown and that's like being in the stream, but too overwhelming. Experiencing snippets to your, of yourself isn't your true experience. Um, that's a lot to take in, first of all. I think it's very interesting that the writing style is very much free writing and then he also mentions that 
his PTSD is like a stream of consciousness, um, which is kind of like the fiction version of free writing, if that makes any sense. So I think the two are like kind of correlated and, and also just that uh, Lake's mental health is playing a big part in his writing and how he's telling his narrative, if that makes sense. And then, of course, the early entries um, in the book, there's a lot of like contrasting feelings of hope and dread. Um, we have the title, which is obviously Night and Day, representing obviously the first half of the book, which is like the struggling lake, and then the second half is the day and is the healing lake. But even within that first half, um, you kind of get a real glimpse into the good days and the bad days all at once. So one example of the more like bad days, I guess, is so um, I just realized that I forgot to show examples of the free writing. Um, so I will share a couple with you right now. We have this one, uh, which reads, Oh sweet baby Jesus, I love when they show me these instances of cooperation uh, through other people. Who gives a shit if it's not a winner? I'll win some other time. 444 four, four, LMAO. I feel like crying again. It's this emotion that the universe loves me and it feels unconditional. Unlike what I, I was used to for 32 years. I feel like I can value myself. Love is a strong word, but it's only describing the alwaysness, if anything. So obviously, in that example, you kind of you get the LMAO and certain expressions. Um, it just it reads like how your thoughts go, how real people are, and then also proves the iPhone writing. And then I have another one. Um, if it casually makes its way to him, parentheses, way autocorrected to, yeah, parentheses, there's like an awareness of the form of like the autocorrect. Um, I don't know what the intention is by mentioning that there was an autocorrect, but it just feels very real and we're experiencing this like, these thoughts and this writing process with Lake, um, which I think is a really effective way to tell your story and then of course um the structure of the book or the intended structure of the book is to be both showing the struggle and the healing um hence the title night and day um and i think some of that appears even uh, contained in the first half, where some passages will be very chaotic, um, such as this one. Even though this is a positive day, it just, it reads very high emotion, um, where he says, it reads, something you lost will soon reappear. We were like, get the fuck out of here. Having just lost everything, we knew this was the universe speaking to us, hilariously. Whether it were the actual home or new home or just our personal belong belongings, we didn't care. Finding that fortune slip right under the table put us on a high note for 36 hours. And then um, other times in that first half, you get really insightful, um, profound, thought through um, pieces, such as this one, which is really long, so I apologize. But you got, I love you, thank you, I'm sorry, I forgive you. As a psychic, I did not understand this for a couple weeks. Now I do. I did my thing, and through my ability at it. Now it's painfully obvious and simple. It can seem complex. It's, a, it's all a mirror, a play, a joke, an example, an experience, a ride, a duality of being well in one body. Look at the energy here. I love you. Starting off real strong with the wording, then it flips into receiving mode, TM, with thank you where we validate there being a consciousness to receive the I love you, then an apology. Why? It's the only thing left to do after we ask for and then receive something big. I'm sorry that I need to ask you, me slash yourself, for anything of myself. Maybe it feels like skipping the hard work. Then another validation of consciousness experiencing receiving the, the apology 
and we see another response back it's almost a backwards conversation no sorry actually it's that well, there's two beings communicating this a higher and a lower one is handing over the reins to the other the other lacks toxicity and they just know better but to say like but to say it like this to yourself makes the duality of being real you step into the reality of yourself and then really start talking to yourself in that manner in that manner like you're sorry that you love them parentheses you it's hard to just sit there and love yourself unconditionally or even not why not consider that it'd just be way easier if you considered there's a different other you it'd be like communing uh, with this outside entity all the time instead of it being like what for it's just me here just me the love ain't here that's between people not for individuals well fuck that i says imagine you had literally two people in you get your mind out of the gutter that brings a whole new enjoyment to be alone for a while date yourself can you imagine the excitement sex after the movie masturbation has never been so awkward so yeah that was a pretty lengthy uh, passage but you kind of get like something really like thought out but then even at the end he brings it back to like something casual it almost like plays off the the really insightfulness by like kind of making a joke but it's cool but this is all within the first half once we actually get to the second half which like hasn't written a whole lot of yet um you get things like this that reads um all of what you read previously i wrote two years and one month ago it's been a long time since i've come back to this but it, but the time is right i think i'm not fully healed from what happened to my parents and but I'm, I'm in such a i'm in a much better place i'm not really angry at them and i've come to let go of the thoughts that cause distortions i'm almost able to forgive them just not the act so i could honestly continue with the rest of that um passage but I think just that beginning um, says enough. Um, I think the retrospection here is very important and it's specific reflection on the past. And when, um, while the first half was really all over the place and raw and maybe not speci always specific about things, um, the second half is specific and is addressing those things it's like pinpointing um what he feels why he feels it what he's doing to heal what he's ready for expressing boundaries and so on um so i really i really am excited to see um the rest of this book if it does get finished i think it's doing a lot as a form and also as a a piece of of non-fiction of uh real experiences real perspectives um and the writing style is quite enjoyable because you don't feel like you're reading you don't you don't really feel like you're reading a book you feel like you're reading some text messages that your friend sent you um or you like it just it just feels personal and it feels real and raw and uh, the second half um from what has been written um also feels very uh considerate of the past even if you may not feel the same way about things it just just shows a lot of growth and healing is possible and in some ways offers advice as well um so on that note um i had also asked like some questions about himself as a writer um and i asked him how would he describe himself as a writer which he responded fun truthful dynamic bold funny unhinged unfiltered um and seeking enlightenment which I think every single one of those words um, perfectly defines uh, night and day, which I we just, you know, talked about. But he also hopes to refine his writing to be more deliberate and method method oh my god, methodological. 
method methodology methodolo methodological that does not sound right um i'm gonna just put the word on the screen because for some reason i can't i can't pronounce it right now but yeah to be more deliberate and methodological method methodological for his work on the law of attraction i'm so sorry i don't know why i can't pronounce that as for night and day um he uses a lot of analogies to simplify the complex which i think he does quite effectively um and he explained that um if he can understand his problems by writing them out he can also help others experiencing the same thing in similar situations um and i also asked him what does writing mean to you um, he responded that writing has always come easily to him, especially for working through complex spiritual uh, topics. While it would be great for others to benefit from his writing, uh, he is mainly doing it for himself to improve his own life. Uh, it serves as a marker of growth, um, which we see a lot in the second half of his book. And he also mentioned that his girlfriend has been the primary breadwinner in the relationship and writing allowed Lake to feel like he could finally have his turn to make an earning um, by being himself in a medium that he enjoys. While his book remains unfinished, he does hope to keep writing and eventually publish and sell, uh, given that a lot of users on Reddit have expressed to him that they desire to read his work and have asked him where they could buy it um and currently it's not available anywhere it's not even posted online anywhere but lake was kind enough to compile all of his writing for me in one document even though it's unfinished i'm glad i got to read what i did hopefully he will finish this book soon and have it available for others to read soon um but in the meantime if you're interested in Lake's thoughts and writings on the law of attraction. He has written a lot under the the subreddit law of attraction, which I mentioned before. Um, so I will link the subreddit and you just have to search his user to see um, all of his writing and posts on that topic. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the, the snippets of Lake's work today. I thought they were lots of fun, um, but also really personal and um, they deal with a lot of trauma. Um, but they really, I feel like I really got to know Lake uh, through his writing. Um, and I hope he continues to write because there's, I think he has a very interesting perspective to share with us and is a very great addition to my series on local North Bay authors. I really hope you guys enjoyed today and hopefully I will see you guys soon.